So, some geology. All right. Um, minerals are a big chunk of geology 101. In earth science, they play a much smaller role. I will most likely be using this lecture for my earth science class, so I might talk to them periodically in this video. But um, for my hunk of hunk of geology students here right now uh, on campus and on, online, um, this is going to be a big part of your semester. We're going to spend one day probably in lecture with it. You're going to spend two to three lab, well, three labs easily. Uh, plus study time, plus a test with it in labs. So um, you could almost say that the emphasis is on lab with the mineral content. But that's, that's different information. Um, in here, we're going to talk about what it means to be a mineral, what a mineral is, what a mineral isn't, uh, so on and so forth. In there you're going to learn specifically this is a hunk of this, that is a hunk of that, and, and so on and so forth. You might see some formulas show up in both sides, but please rest assured you're, you're never going to have to regurgitate a formula for me. Okay? Just, just don't. Um, in lecture they show up because we're trying to explain to you how minerals are built, and also it kind of segues into igneous rocks, what these minerals are, why there are these these seemingly arbitrary groupings that you're going to need to bang into your head for lab class. Well, they're not arbitrary. They're based in their chemistry. Um, I'm never going to hold up a hunk of something in here and say, what is this? But I might say, it's a silicate and expect you to know, Oh, okay, that means it contains a lot of silica in it. Or if I tell you it's a sulfur group, you say, oh, okay, it has sulfur in it, plus, okay, okay. So, cognitively, it's, 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 it's different content. And, and necessarily so. Um, you know, can't haul the rocks around, they're heavy, right? Um, but, um, so it has two different... Two different, two different things that we're looking at, and like I, I said, excuse me, uh, really in two separate classes, all right? Uh, for you folks at home doing this, I, I know it's hard to separate lecture and lab uh, because, you know, you're all just at your dining room table or wherever you're, you're doing this, this work at. It's all the same place, potentially all the same time for you. Uh, but again, on campus, you know, they have lab on a completely different day, completely different room, and there's really a, a gear change, a gear shift there. So, so this is going to be a big chunk um, in lab, at any rate, of the, the first part of the, the semester. And it's going to segue straight into rocks. And by then you're pulling your hair out and say, oh, my God, I'm so sick of looking at rocks and minerals. And we'll have three weeks of rocks to do and then another test. And then we get to do fun stuff. Not that rocks and minerals aren't fun, but you guys do. It, it gets to wear on you after a while. And again, you folks at home as well. So, all right, this is sort of prefaced, you don't need it entirely, but sort of prefaced by the atomic review stuff we did the other day. You'll see some words again, keep it in context, and we're talking about compounds, all right, stuff like that. But again, we're not going to be doing protons and neutrons and doing formulas and taking how many pluses on this side and... Don't worry about that. That's that's for a different class. Also, lastly, and then I will start talking about this. Believe it or not, you can take 14 weeks all on minerals. I did it. It's really in depth, um, and that's how I found out it was not for me. I do critters and surface processes. That's that's my end of things in geology. But boy, there are folks out there that that love this stuff, and uh, if you look in the cabinets in our lab room, you'll see these cool uh, looking. I think they're yellow with clear plexiglass and all these crystal shapes and so on and so forth. And they get into crystallography and we'll acknowledge crystallinity in here. 
but uh, but boy howdy, you could really really get into the nitty gritty with this stuff. So right here, is this blocking your way? I usually get it out of the way, but can you see through it? Can you? Oh, you over here next to this area. Right? Minerals are composed of one or more elements. I've mentioned a handful of times that you guys are going to need to learn the definition of a mineral. This is not it. The definition of a mineral is much longer, much more delineated. Yet when it comes time for the test, uh, let's see, there's three, six, nine of you sitting here. There's 25, 26 on the line. Close to a dozen of you are going to write this. Possibly because it's the only thing you remember. Possibly, I, I, don't, I don't know why. This does explain what, what minerals are-ish. But it's like saying meatloaf is, is ground beef and breadcrumb and, and egg. Yeah, that, that's true, but doesn't really give you a whole picture of what the meatloaf looks like, what it tastes like, so on and so forth. So it's kind of along those lines. This is true, though. Some minerals are composed of just a single element, sulfur. We mentioned it a little bit ago. Um, diamond. Diamonds are minerals. Uh, diamonds are just composed of, well, you guys tell me, what are diamonds composed of? Carbon, yep. All right, you're going to have something composed entirely of carbon as well, called graphite. Everybody gets all nervous because it gets all over their fingers. They're like, oh my God, I got lead on my fingers. It's not lead. You do have lead a little later and tied up in, in another mineral. Um, it doesn't as good get on your fingers anywhere near as easily. But you, you look at it, it looks like pencil lead. and It's not lead, it's carbon. Doesn't look anything like a diamond, though, and that's that's one of the crazy parts of it. Carbon's some pretty strange stuff. And then other minerals are composed of two or more elements. Some have a dozen super crazy formulas. The point of going back and doing that atomic review was so that when you see all those strings of letters in there, you have some vague idea of half of what's in it, two-thirds of what's in it, okay? Or at the very least, if you had some strange reason to know what they were, you know how to now use the periodic table to find that element and, and so on and so forth, right? So that's why we had that, just so it wasn't like Spanish up here or whatever would be a foreign language for you, okay? Um, French, whatever. We wanted it to have some meaning. As a very basic division, um, they talk about minerals as elementals or compounds. I mentioned that there's some mineral groups that you'll learn for lab class. We'll talk about them in here as well. You'll have questions about them in here as well. They are mostly out of the compounds. Elemental remains one of the groups, and you'll, you'll see that later. Okay. But the majority of minerals out there and the majority of the breakdown of the groupings that we do are of those compounds. Now, luckily for you guys, um, there's hundred and some odd elements on that periodic table, right? Um, there's only eight of them that tend to show up over and over and over again when we're making stuff uh, in the crust of the earth, all right? Now, I always put that little modifier in there, delineator, whatever you want to call it. We're talking about in the crust. Remember, you got a whole mantle's worth of goo to, to, to do. You got the core, okay? But we're talking about the, the, the crust for the most part. This is stuff you're most likely to encounter. And mind you, some of the stuff at the crust did originate in the mantle, by all means. Much of it did. But so there's only eight ingredients overall. We tend to use a lot of baking metaphors when we talk about this stuff. All right, talk about what you know, right? So 
this is your flour, your sugar, your your yeast, your your eggs, your milk, your butter. These those main ingredients that you put in damn near everything you bake. Okay, we see those ingredients, the <laughs> elemental equivalents of those ingredients, over and over and over again. And believe it or not, out of those eight, there's two. Your flour and sugar, if you would, or whatever you deem the most important part of baking, perhaps chocolate. There's two that show up in three quarters of the composition. Oxygen and silicon. Oxygen and silicon make up three quarters of the composition of the crust. So those remaining six aren't even 25% because you got all that other crap in there, right? We mentioned gold a couple minutes ago. Remember gold, silver, platinum, all those cool things we mine, rubies, diamonds. Those are all in that, they're in the crust, right? So those are all in that mix in the crust. Those are a fraction because you think about how rare they are. So there's that, that, that remaining 8% doesn't come in at that full 25 that's left, if you're following me here. But oxygen and silicon, you're going to see over and over again. You're going to be sick of hearing about oxygen and silicon by the time we're done. If you're paying attention, you will be. And that's good. Then you will have, I will have done our job. So what are they? Oxygen, silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, magnesium. Those are the big eight. And you see, by the time we get down to eight, we're not looking at that big of a hunk percentage-wise. Not looking at that big of a hunk at all. I'm not going to ask you to remember these two, these percentages with the exception of the top two. And feel free to round. Geologists, geologists round all the time. We deal with millions, hundreds of millions of years of history, billions sometimes. Not to be bothered with decimal places. So 47% is oxygen, 28% silicon. And again, together, that makes the 75% we just talked about. Decent amount of aluminum in there, decent amount of iron. And then, boy, it just really, really drops. 3%, 2%. You'll see these symbols, these letters, show up in the formulas. You're also going to see some other stuff. I won't lie. But you should see these by if this if this slide is true, this premise is true, you should see these elements show up over and over again in the formulas that you're writing down in the lab to help you identify what group they're in. So the remaining, the hundred and some odd elements that are left in that periodic table come in accounting for that last one and a half percent. As I said, oxygen and silicon, you've heard it four times now. They form the mineral group. First time we're giving you an official mineral group name here. The silicates. Dun, dun, dun. Right? The silicates. Uh, you see the silicon in the title there. That's in there in the uh, ingredients list there. That's part of where it's coming from. The silicates contain are, are minerals that contain the compound silica 
and silica is a compound that contains the element silicon. And that does get a little confusing for you guys. Silicon, silica, silicates. Kits, however you care to pronounce it. Con is the element. Ka is the compound. Kates is the group. Just like the other day, I don't think anyone flubbed on it, though. You guys did good. Uh, sometimes when we talk about, um, when I have you having that conversation about compounds the first day, and I say, what's in salt? And someone will say sodium, and someone else will say chloride. No, it's not chloride, it's chlorine. Chloride is a different thing. Salt. But I think you guys all said chlorine. Chlorine is the element. All right, so you'll, you'll use it enough, more than likely, that it, that it won't be a big stickler. And, and I'm not a complete punk when, when we're grading. Um, and, and again, you guys seldom are writing stuff down anyhow, actual ver words. But um, do try to keep it straight. Silicon, silica, silicates. Narrative, don't, don't scribble this. Um, we told you a couple minutes ago that a mineral could be composed of one or more elements. That is not its definition, all right? Here, finally, is its definition. And you're like, wait a minute, there's no sentences. How could this be a definition? I don't care if you're sentences kind of person or bullet points kind of person. I accept either. As long as I see the following four, we're going to say words, even though a couple of them are multiple words, but as long as I see the following four words when I ask you what the definition of a mineral is. And we will explain all of this. Don't worry. A mineral is naturally occurring. A mineral is inorganic. A mineral is crystalline. And a mineral is made or composed of a fixed set of chemical and physical properties. One sec, I'm going to flip the slide. I, just, I made the other one so small I can't read them. Okay. Here's the same things, but as a sentence. If you like sentences, if that works better for your memory. A mineral is a naturally occurring inorganic substance with a crystalline structure and a fixed set of chemical and physical properties. Same thing. I don't care which one you give me. But you see how the same words are in each of them, okay? Naturally occurring. Crystalline. Inorganic. Out of order, sorry. Fixed set of chemical and physical properties. Anyone need me to go back to the other side? I mean, you got the same, same words here. We good? talk about each of these in turn. Uh, naturally occurring. Kind of hard not to be circular on this one, but it, it occurs naturally in nature. It, it's not man-made, woman-made, squirrel-made. It, it just just is. Um, That kind of segues. Some people get a little confused with the next one. Because uh, naturally occurring things can be alive. They could be not alive. And that's not even necessarily what this next one means, inorganic. Okay. Because the opposite of inorganic, of course, is, is organic. But um, when we say something is inorganic, it's not a byproduct of life. Right. It itself is not alive. It never was alive. Never will be alive. One asterisk on that never will be alive. Uh, any of you taken environmental science here yet? 
undoubtedly some of you will. Um, in environmental science, we talk about uh, natural cycles, bigger, big cycles of, of nutrient resources uh, working through the communities, through the environments. Um, it is true that uh, some of the elements in the minerals, I think what you might commonly know as vitamins and nutrients, okay? Some of those do work their way from the rocks into the soil and do get you know sucked up into your carrots and whatnot. So yeah, there is that sort of caveat exception there, but that's not what we're talking about. The, 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 the calcium that goes into your veggies is never, it's still in an organic component. So, um, let's do a quick quiz here. Uh, grass, naturally occurring? Arguably, we've cultivated over the years, but blah, 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 blah. Grass, naturally occurring? Yeah. Inorganic or organic? Organic, yeah. All right, it's alive. It grows, it needs sun, it needs energy, it dies. Uh, tough one, water. Generally speaking, water gets thrown in the inorganic category. Um, just want to do a little, little, make sure we're on the same page here with it. Inorganic and organic. I could have said a rock, but you guys don't probably know enough yet about rocks. Some rocks can be organic. Um, so I didn't want to throw that one out there. So naturally occurring, inorganic, crystalline. We go back to the little Legos with crystal in here. Except that we don't just have little flat squares. We have any three-dimensional shape that you can think of and many more that you probably don't even know exist. And these are tiny little crystals. They're atomic structure arranged kind of things. Okay, you may know of a couple if you remember any of your chemistry. We'll talk about one in here, all right, to sort of pay homage to how important crystallinity is. And as it turns out, it's the most common crystal shape as well, so we're, we're kind of killing two birds with one stone here. But so they have to be crystal. And again, think of these crystals as, as building blocks. And also kind of keep in the back of your mind the fact, again, Legos is a great example. Um, video games used to be, their their the graphics are amazing nowadays, but when I was a kid, everything was a function, uh, as it is now, of pixels, but pixels were little tiny squares, okay? So everything you were playing, whether it was a tank game or ballerina game or, uh, you know, frogger game. Hey, hold on one sec. Pardon me. Like I said, you came to mind, but if, if there's someone whose job that is already ahead of me, yeah, I don't know if that will touch on this. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. Sorry about that, you guys. I wanted to hit pause. I missed it. Um, I also teach that, that college seminar class, college foundations, whatever, and I found out that, uh, well, I've kind of known it, but. They don't have anyone uh, come talk to you guys about like computer services and stuff. Do you guys know you have access to a full like copy of Microsoft Office and stuff like that? Yeah, see, exactly. Um, they need to tell you that. Uh, OneDrive, you get an account with OneDrive, which is their version of the cloud. Um, but more importantly, you get you get Office. You could give up Google finally if you if you're tired of it after high school. 
um, and so many other things. So and he's, he's definitely the man to help us with that. But uh, anyhow, so you folks at home, you, you, I, I know I've emailed a couple of you guys too that you didn't have anything to type in. Um, call Ed Tech, Educational Technologies. And say, hey, my teacher said I have access to a copy of Office. How do I get it? So, anyhow, crystalline building blocks, Atari, Legos, everything was a function of squares back then. All right, nowadays pixels are so stinking tiny that that you can, you know, as you guys know, everything looks totally realistic. Um, but crystals, I'm sorry, um, well, minerals are a function of their crystal shape. You can't build something out of a whole bunch of crystals and not have it in some way resemble all right, uh, the, the crystallinity uh, within. So, In lab, you guys are going to see a few actual crystals. Okay, A quartz crystal, for example. Um, you're going to see a, a rock salt crystal, halite, uh, calcite. few that are crystalline, and you'll say, oh, this is crystalline. No, they all are. You just, most of the time, you can't see it. Whether it's um, just a really crummy lab specimen, which is often the case. Uh, you guys aren't going to get nice, pretty museum quality stuff. Um, or more so, it's opaque, it's, it's massive. Uh, it just, in, in that, what I mean, all the crystals have grown together and you can't tell. Okay, imagine like no seams with your Lego structure, whatever you built. But they're in there. Okay, even when you can't see them, the, uh, they're in there. Naturally occurring, inorganic, crystalline, fixed. It doesn't mean it was broken. What it means is it is consistent, constant, always the same. That's what fixed means. You always make it the same way. Sodium chloride always has sodium, always has chlorine. Water always has hydrogen. Excuse me, hydrogen always has oxygen. And then somebody raises their hand and say, "Well, I bought pink Himalayan sea salt, and my cousin has blue Tibetan sea salt. The Himalayan one's real. I don't know. I made up the blue one. Well, how, what, what, what's what? They can't be consistent." Those, and it doesn't sound like a good word, those are impurities, okay? There's always some, some riffraff in the mix. What we're saying, think about it like water, too. Ideally, the water you're drinking is H2O. But, God forbid, there could be something else in there. Some people freak out about the fluoride that's put in it. Uh, many of you buy enhanced water. Right, you got uh, it's pH balance, whether it's raised or lowered. I think mostly they lower them now or raise them nowadays. Everyone wants basic water, um, but there's electrolytes in it. But is it still water? Yeah, it's still water. So you're going to see the same thing with minerals. All right, what we're talking about here is at its core, at its its foundational structure. It's the same ingredients over and over and over again. Now, there are a few cases where they actually give different names when there's different impurities. If you are a, um, a gem hound, okay, a lot of you were when you were kids and it fades by the time you hit the teen into adulthood. But remember, if you knew, you knew your cat's eye and your jasper and your thises and your thatses, it's all damn quartz, okay? But some of them have pretty colors that look like this, and it gets a name. Some of them have pretty colors like that, and it gets a name. And so they do that a lot. Um, there's a really big group called the Feldspars. You guys are going to learn a couple Feldspars. That's another example where really officially, not even like in the hobbyist realm, but really officially they've got, there's, there's, there's probably a 14-week class on Feldspars somewhere, okay? Um, like we had the 14 weeks on minerals, but we don't we don't get that deep. So what I'm getting at is is because I'm going to tell you here in a second um, that this is if this weren't true, this last statement here weren't true, we wouldn't be able to do what we do in lab. I wouldn't be able to make up tables that say, okay, if it's this, 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 and this, then it must be that mineral. 
We could only make those rules because this last slide here. And yeah, you're going to see there's going to be some minor inconsistencies. The table next to you's orthoclase might be a little darker or oranger than your orthoclase. Um, the rose quartz might be rosier than yours, or vice versa. But it's still rose quartz. So, and, and this is where I, I beg you guys in lab not to get hung up on the color so much. Um, this is actually more of an issue for on campus than it is on online. Online, we're kind of focused on a handful of specimens. It doesn't really change much for them because they have to work primarily with pictures that I provide them. Now, mind you, if you look at your specimens, you guys at home keep this in mind. If you look at your specimens, uh, my phone has night mode on it now, for example. So at night, it takes out, what does it take out? Blue light? So everything tints to the reddish yellow. If you're studying your minerals at, at 11 o'clock at night, and then you're looking at them again at 9 o'clock in the morning, yeah, the color might be a little different. All right. But more so, it's on campus when I actually have different hand specimens and we do these in, in, in lab the whole time, and then on the test, I put out my nice, pretty test specimens, which aren't that different. I don't want to scare you guys, but again, color can vary. All right. So anyhow, not to belabor this, but salt is salt. Salt is cubic. Salt is salty. Salt is clearish. Salt is, is soft. Salt is, uh, did I mention taste already? Has that taste because it's always made the same way, okay? And and if it didn't, it, it wouldn't be salt. Naturally occurring, inorganic, crystalline, composing a fixed set of chemical and physical properties. Last thing, uh, I used to say that I, I don't care how you, what order you write this out in, uh, and, and I still don't. I won't mark it wrong if you put physical before chemical. But please understand, and it took me a long time to understand this myself or to accept this. I don't know what word you want to say. It is the chemical that makes the physical. Uh, if you were in here early in class today, we were talking about chemistry and, and our love or hate of it. Uh, love it or hate it, chemistry is, okay? And I will never admit it to the chemists, but they probably are the foundation. Between them and physics, somewhere in there, okay? Geology is, is you know, and everyone takes geology because they think it's going to be easy. It's actually all the sciences. As you guys have been listening to me over the last couple of weeks, you're coming to find out. It's it's everything. All right? Um, so maybe we're the awesomest. I don't know. But they are at the foundation. The chemical makes the physical. Your cat is your cat and not you because it's chemical functioning. is it Makeup is that of a cat. It's It's not the squirrel because the squirrel has a different... So the chemistry underlies the physical always. Okay. So, and like I said, don't tell any chemist I said. Yeah, that's just more babbling, probably what I said here. Yeah, that's everything I just said. So those properties, which are what you'll learn in lab, are unchanging because the chemistry is unchanging. 